Good evening and welcome to Hope in the Night. I'm your host this evening, Miss Patricia. You're listening to um, the Watchmen on the Wall Ministries on WTVO Radio. This is a very, um, very touching and touchy topic, persecution. We look around the world today at all that's going on in foreign countries and this persecution for righteousness sake, persecution and death in some instances for not denying the Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. Persecution, even abroad, You won't maybe act like some of your co-workers. You might walk away when you're hearing filthy language or dirty jokes. You might not want to go out with them on a Friday night to party and get drunk because it's the Sabbath and you want to get home and honor your father. Persecution. The young people everyone's cussing and everyone's getting high and everyone's fooling around but you young people that have been separated for the Lord you won't touch that you won't taste that you won't go where that is because this separation and with separation from the things of this world comes persecution We are not of the world, but we live in the world. And a lot of times, it rubs people the wrong way when we want to follow Yahweh. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, from whom all things come, who made everything, both seen and unseen. Father, you have a call on your children to be separate from this world system. You have called us out, even though we have to live in And some of us, or most of us, probably all of us that have chosen to walk and live for you, are suffering persecution. For righteousness sake, there's a difference. Father, I ask that you would wrap your arms around your sons and daughters tonight, encouraging them, Father to not throw in the towel, encouraging them, Father, that you've got it under control, no matter what it looks like. You will come through. You've heard their prayer. Because we belong to you, Lord God, you will provide all of our needs, physically, spiritually, and mentally. We so need you tonight, Father. Father, I ask tonight that what I would share would be an encouragement to your children. I ask for your help tonight, Father, that my mind would be totally stayed on you and your message tonight. Would bring healing to your children. Bishem Yeshua. That's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Can everyone hear me in the chat room okay before I proceed? 
just give me a number one in the chat room. Somebody throw a number one up there. Let me know if, if I need to turn up my mic. Thank you, Mavis. Wonderful. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And that's in Matthew 5, 10 through 12. We're called blessed. Now make sure the persecution is coming because you're walking up right before the Lord. It's a little check for me and a check for you if it, if it counts. I need, I need to check myself too. Persecution is here. The master does not offer to bless us simply because we suffer. We're blessed only if that suffering is for righteousness sake. Thus there's no merit in suffering the judge, the just punishment for evil deeds that we've done. When political radicals and common critical criminals who rob and murder are caught and punished, they should not be glorified as heroes or martyrs. They're receiving their just desert. But when others speak of us, there's no blessing promise there's no blessing promise unless the evil speech is false. Thus when false teachers are checked and exposed, or and sinners are disciplined, they should receive no comfort from others who have no stomach for conflict of faith, but who can also and always take hidden photo shots or pot shots I meant at the faithful preachers and elders who expose the error let me say that again because I confuse the words some don't have a stomach for confrontation for correction me and brother Larry did a great program on there on Friday night but a lot of times people will take pot shots at the preachers, at elders, at true elders, that um, sons and daughters of the king who are standing for righteousness on their job, who will not stand there and laugh at a filthy, dirty joke, and they'll take pot shots at you. I remember they did that to me at Sprint. I remember little hits here and there. The blessed ones are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. And this means to suffer for the Son of Man's sake, for Jesus, for Yeshua's sake. If we simply live the kind of life Christ demands and refuse to renounce or disgrace his precious name, let me stop there. When we allow sin in our presence, I, you don't have to make a big joke. Oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. I'm a follower of Yah. Don't do that. No, walk away. Walk away. You don't have to make a big scene sometimes. Walk away. We have to make a stand. We need to. We must needs make a stand. My mama used to say, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for everything. This means to suffer for the Son of Man's sake, for Jesus' sake. If we simply live the kind of life that Christ demands and refuse to renounce or disgrace his precious name. Because that's what's happening. Oh, look at that. And they call themselves a Christian. Did you see them laughing with everybody else? Oh, did you see her guzzling down that stoly schneider? The, oh, my God. And she is witnessing Jesus. See, that's what I mean. They're all like that. You know, what would we want? We don't need to be anything like that. She acts like me. Be careful. You can't go around gossiping and 
hating on people and then say hallelujah glory to God and it's hard sometimes some, there's some people that I like to smack upside their head especially right now from some of the things I heard today oh yeah but that's not the right thing to do A and B what kind of a witness would that be the Lord promised to bless us when men shall say all manner of evil against us falsely for my sake right brother Larry you're in that chat room you know what I mean the Lord promises to bless WTVO radio when men say all false things, evil, falsely, against us for his name's sake. Hold on, Brother Larry. Hold on, Brother Larry. WTVO is going to grow for the glory of Yahweh. Everything the enemy has meant for evil the Lord will not permit. Oh, we're going to still have trials. We're going to still have tribulations. But we're going to press. You're going to press. And watch how God uses WTBO radio for every negative and false and perverted thing that has come against WOW and WTBO radio. I'm just going to say it like that. A day doesn't go by that I don't get an email. A message on my Facebook. I wasn't going to go yet, but I'm going to. No names mentioned. We're people. A person. A certain person. Is writing to my friends. Perverted lies. Every day. And they come to me. And they tell me. And I tell them, pray for that person. Pray for that person. When you are persecuted for righteousness sake, God will bless you. God will bless you blessings. Just visiting Mavis, Shar, and Walter, God will bless you. Keep standing for the Lord for righteousness sake. Don't take down. No matter what comes against you, no matter what they want to call you, no matter what they want to say about you, if it is not true, if it's true, go drop to your knees and repent. If it's not true, let the Lord handle it. Let the Lord handle it. Glory to God. Glory to God. The term persecute is from the root, which means to put to flight or drive away. Thus the word means in any way, whatever, to harass, to trouble, to molest one. And this includes all that can be done to hurt one outwardly. Are you being troubled? Are you being harassed? Are you being put to flight? Are you being hurt? In ancient times, God's people were persecuted by being tortured. I haven't been tortured yet. Birth at the stake. Stoned to death. Crucified boiled in oil, beheaded. Today, these things are going on. Oh, we don't know here in the U.S. what persecution is. Not yet. Gird up your loins. Prepare your hearts. Those that are listening over in the other countries where there is persecution going on right now, Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. May he help you stand in the time when you face death that you would not deny your Messiah, Jesus. We consider it an honor to be able to talk to you and to share the word with you. We pray peace upon you. And protection until it's God's time if it be back then they were stoned they were sawn asunder they were tempted they were slain with the sword they wandered about in sheepskins in goatskins being destitute afflicted and tormented 
of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in caves. And today when people flatter themselves as being tolerant and broad-minded, oh, come on, you're not broad-minded enough, come on. You know, um, those two guys, they just, they love each other. Why are you being so... You know, why are you being so hateful saying that men should not be in the same bed with men and women shouldn't be in the same bed with women and, and babies should not be allowed to be murdered within the womb? Why are you acting like that? Come on. It's their choice. It's their life. No. If the laws of the government, and I hope they hear me, if the laws of the government go against the word of Yahweh God, it is wrong and you do not have to obey it. Don't let no pastor tell you, well, Romans says no. Anything that goes against what the Lord says is wrong. Be willing. Be willing to take a stand. And if need be, to lose your life. It's possible it can come here. Today, when people flatter themselves as being tolerant and broad-minded, persecution usually, although not always, takes on more subtle forms. It might come in the shape of the loss of a job or a failure to receive a promotion because a businessman will not engage in unethical or immoral practices. Praise God. He didn't want you to have that job anyway. He's got something better for you. And until you get that, Nelson, he'll provide for your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Keep on preaching the word, brother. Boldly declare the word. To revile. To revile someone is to insult them and call them by contemptuous names. Jesus warned, if they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his household? And that's Matthew 10, 25. As the Son of God hung, dying on the cross, his tormentors cruelly mocked and reviled him. Tertullus contemptuously styled the church the sex of the Nazarenes. Yeah, faithful Christians today are labeled Campbellites and aunties and this and that. And teenage Christians are mocked as square and chicken. They get name called because they don't want to go along with the crowd. Ignorant people who cannot meet one's arguments but refuse to admit they are wrong. If you follow the master, people will say all manner of evil against you. They'll call you Judaizer. They'll say that your house is full and that your ministry is dissolving. They'll lie. They'll backbite. The great apostle, Paul, said, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are off-scouring of all things unto this day. He said, no man can long preach the gospel faithfully without having a multitude of lies told about him by vicious sinners and false brethren. Indeed, all faithful Christians must endure slander and misrepresentation. You know, the Lord gave me this message this weekend before I even got any messages on Facebook. As I read my notes, it's blowing me away and it's helping me to just stand, to just stand, no matter what, no matter what. Yeshua, Jesus, he promises of those who suffer for him, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is a repetition of the blessing of the first beatitude. The poor in spirit possess the kingdom in that they gain entrance there into. The persecuted possess the kingdom in a yet higher sense, enjoying the fullest blessings possible from citizenship and finally inheriting the kingdom in the heavenly abode. This is amply demonstrated in the second promised reward. The master reveals, for great is your reward in heaven. Although we will never earn our salvation because Yeshua did it on the cross, Yahweh becoming flesh, 
dying for our sins, the replacement, the sacrifice lamb, and rising and seated at the right hand of the Father, just waiting to return and to get us out of Egypt. We're in Egypt right now. We're in Egypt right now. Help us, Father. Help us, Father, build those bricks without mortar. <laughs> Help us, Father. Help us, Father, work for those unjust bosses and do it with a smile. Help us, Father. Help us, Father. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. 2 Corinthians 4.17 Romans 8.18 8, says, For I reckon <clears throat> that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Be thou faithful unto death, promises the Lamb of God, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's Revelations 2.10. The basis of this reward is revealed in the statement, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you, Matthew 5.12. To withstand persecution shows our faith to be the same quality, the staunched quality that caused the prophets of old to remain loyal despite terrible suffering. Stephen rebuked the Jews. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they've slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one of whom ye have been now the betrayers and the murderers. He said that in Acts 7.52. He got in their faces the, to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Jews from the synagogue of Satan. Not the precious Jewish brethren that are going to come into the faith that we're praying for. Oh, he got right in their faces. One of the most famous of all martyrs was Polycarp, the aged bishop of Smyrna. The mob dragged him to the tribunal of the Roman magistrate, and he was given an inevitable choice sacrifice to the godhead of Caesar or die. Eighty and six years came the immortal reply, Have I served Christ? And he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? So they brought him to the stake, and he prayed his last prayer, O Lord God Almighty, the Father of well-beloved and ever-blessed Son, by whom we have received the knowledge of thee, I thank thee that thou has graciously thought me worthy of this day and of this hour. Here was the supreme opportunity to demonstrate his loyalty to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Beloved, to suffer for Christ is to have fellowship What a privilege to share in the sufferings of our Messiah. Have we shed blood yet? No, we haven't. Luke records the master as having advised, leap for joy. And why shouldn't we leap in the face of suffering? When we realize how great the blessings are that follow, many times in our walk, there may be people that we trust that let us down. And Jesus asked his disciples to do something, but they did not. They let him down. He said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. 
And he went a little further and he fell on his face and prayed, saying to my father, Oh, my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he came to see the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And you know the story goes on. He went away again and came back. They were asleep again. Even those that call themselves saints may be against us. See, Satan is able to stir up people against, and a lot of times saints against other saints. Those that truly love the Lord, if we're not careful, we can be used by the enemy. That's why we need to think more than we speak. My hubby says God gave us two ears and only one mouth, so we think, so we listen more before we speak. Just listen, pause, don't say nothing. Be careful. Amen. Indeed. I'm pulling this back a little bit so I can see what's going on in the chat room. Sometimes we get angry. I know I do. And if we don't count to ten and realize that we're sinning, be angry and sin not. We can do a lot of destruction with this tongue. We really can. <coughs> I know Paul and Silas had a had a split between the two of them. They disagreed on something. And they, and they kept on doing what God told them to do. Nobody said anything bad about the other. That's the way. That's the way. Amen. Satan's able to stir up the saints against other saints. People may be against you in the same way. It's written in Matthew 20 and 20 to 24. Then came to him the mother of Zebedee's children with her sons, worshipping him, and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? And she said unto him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on your right hand and the one on your left, in thy kingdom. But to sit on my right hand and on my left is not mine to give, he said, but it shall be given to them for whom is much prepared of my father. When the ten heard it, they were moved with indignation against the two brethren. Ouch. Ouch. Please, beloved. Please don't hurt each other. Don't hurt each other. A true saint of God stops and drops to his knees and prays before they open their mouth. People will persecute you. Jesus shows us clearly in John 15 and 20. If they have persecuted me, they will persecute you. A person may be persecuted because they do what is right. And Jesus said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. You'll be hated for his name's sake. Matthew 24, 9, 10, and 12. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you will be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Please keep that in mind. Don't let your love for God wax cold. You're neither hot nor cold. That makes you look warm and he will vomit you out of his mouth. Don't let your love for him wax cold. Oh man, I'm telling you, a lot of times I get so frustrated by things around me. It seems like the pressure comes from everywhere. And I just want to run away. I'm just being honest. It is hard sometimes 
to put everything in perspective that you're you're supposed to be doing that you need to get done that you want to get done that you wish you could get done what you've got to do instead of getting angry at the Lord or instead of doing something dumb stop and drop to your knees and cry out to the Lord he'll help you he'll help you get through that time now is not the time to grow weary in well doing right brother Nelson he encouraged me today now's not the time to be weary in well doing people will be displeased with the things that you do as you bring forth the uncompromised gospel and let your light so shine before men people will be displeased with you it is written in Matthew 21, 15, and 16, And when the chief priest and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased and said unto him, Hearest thou these say? And Jesus saith unto them, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? They will despise you as the person brings forth the uncompromised gospel, be it at a Walmart, at a gas pump, at your job, on a microphone, whatever it is, you will be despised. Luke 10, 16, he that heareth you, heareth me, and he that despiseth you, despiseth me, and he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me know that remember that hold on to that they're not hating you they're hating Yahweh the father the creator it's not you they'll think you're crazy as a person brings forth the gospel wherever it is when I'm saying this don't think it's for radio people it's for everybody all the sisters and brothers wherever your feet trod as you go forth and you let your light shine before men, some people will think you're crazy. Matthew 3, 21, And when his friends heard it, they went to lay hold on him, for they said, He is beside himself. People will question what you're doing. As a follower of Messiah, you can expect that. People will try to cause you to doubt what you are doing is right with accusing types of questions. Some will disagree with you. For it is written in Matthew 9, 10, 11, And it came to pass as Jesus sat meet in the house, at meat in the house, behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with them and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto the disciples, why eateth your master with the publicans and sinners? Now let me stop there. He wasn't hanging out at the local bar throwing down some Stoli Schneier and some brewskis, okay? He was sitting there having dinner, and they came around him, and he ministered unto them. I'm not telling you to go out and smoke a joint with somebody, okay? Now if the Lord tells you, he's told me to go to bars and drag people out of there. If Cindy Miller is listening right now, she remembers. I invited her to come. You remember, sis, you and me went to, um, what was the name of that, that place? Over here in the woods in the Ocala Forest, the Big Scrub. Yeah. We used to drag, um, some of our sisters used to tell us that their husbands were in there getting drunk. We'd go in there, we'd preach the gospel and drag the husband out, tell him to go home to his wife. We had a blast, me and her. Now that's okay. Sit down, get a Coke, and minister the word of God. But be careful that if you're not strong, be careful. I know some people that started doing that, and they're still in, in bed with Satan to this day. Mm-hmm. You may be charged unlawful taxes or money you do not owe. Officials may charge you unlawful fees or taxes. 
that's happening all the time. Oh yeah, yes ma'am is right. You may be required to pay money that you do not owe. It's written. And when they were come to Capernaum, that they received tribute money, came Peter and said, Did not master pay tribute? He said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the king of kings? Of whom do the king of the earth take custom or tribute of their ch own children, or of strangers? And Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. And Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free? Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, cast the hook, and take the fish that, the, that first cometh up. And when you has opened his mouth, you'll find a piece of money. Take it and give it to, unto them for me and thee. Yet God can be expected to provide praise. Amen. I know out of the clear blue sky, 2010, I was told that I owe $800 for my tax return. We reported everything. I have no idea where they came up with that, but still trying to work on it. And when I talked to Michelle, she told me that when she started preaching, her and uh, Carl, same thing's happening. She owes so much money, she hasn't gotten out from under it yet. Oh, I don't know, I haven't speak, spoken to her in a couple of years. Things will happen. The enemy will try to get you any way that he can. People will hinder you. As a follower of Jesus, you can expect that others will try to hinder you in many ways. As it is written, Luke eleven fifty two. Woe unto you lawyers, them that were entering in, ye hindered. In Matthew 13, 25, But while men slept, his enemy came, and so tares among the wheat, and went his way. The enemy tries to hinder, to stop, to choke, and to kill the saints. As a follower of Jesus, of Yeshua, you can expect others to try to cause you all types of problems. You're going to be hated, cursed, despitefully used. You might get beaten. I almost got run down one time. I almost got shot another time. I almost got hit in the head with a club another time. Over in, uh, uh, what is it, Pine Lakes, sis. Mavis, you know where I mean. Over there in Pine Lakes is a big group of Satanists that hang out over there. And I was there for a season in my life. Oh, my goodness. The um, One of the leaders, I don't remember his name, tattooed all over the place. He had a Jeep pulled up into the to the 7-Eleven that's over there. There was woods on the left-hand side. There was one time me and Michelle were over there preaching Jesus, and I heard the Lord said, get into the light, which meant to come out of the woods and go in front of the store. I looked up, and one of the people were about to break a club, a, a piece of wood in half and make a club and come up against us. Me and Michelle walked to the light. Another time, that Satanist was in his Jeep, came into the parking lot, and... Um, Patty was nuts when I was like 30 years old, between 23 and 30. I was out there being crazy Patty, um, for the Lord, that is. Um, I went and I jumped into his Jeep. There was a spot there on the front seat, so I thought I'd jump in and say hello. And I was looking at the Motley crew and everything, all the tattoos all over. And if you got tattoos and you've been saved, that's okay. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, stop. You know, don't, don't get no more. But use it as a testimony, okay? Use them as a testimony. But anyway, he had all these satanic symbols all over him. And I started a small conversation. What does this mean, playing dumb? And he looked at me. He knew it meant that he served Satan, this one thing. And I started preaching Jesus to him. He told me to get out of his Jeep. And after I finished, I finally got out of the Jeep. He backed up the Jeep. And he stepped on the gas as I stood there in front of him. And I pointed my finger at him and I said, in the name of Jesus, stop. And he stepped on the brake and he stopped. And he said, you are crazy. And I go, I'm so crazy. I'm going to be here every single Saturday night until you receive Jesus Christ. And we went there every single Saturday night. <laughs> And I got pregnant, and the Lord told me to stop going over there. I don't know if he received Jesus Christ, and I really would love to know. I just might drive over there one night. Maybe I'll take Mavis with me. That would be fun. And see if he's around. I'll know him when I see him. I just don't know his name. All kinds of things will happen. 
<laughs> we'll have fun. We'll have fun, sis, I'll tell you. Oh, Lord, when you stand for the Lord, all things will happen. They'll come against you. You'll be despised. You'll be cursed. You'll be beat. You'll be treated shamefully. You'll be spied on. People will try to catch you in your words. They'll try to twist what you say. They'll deliver you up to the authorities. They'll put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doing God's service. They'll, they'll hate you. They'll separate you. They'll reproach you. They'll cast your name as evil. You'll have enemies. You'll be cursed. Isn't it, isn't it great? Come on over to the Lord. Repent. Obey the commandments of God. Keep his Sabbath day holy. Love Yahweh with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then all this will happen to you. Isn't that a great altar call? Who wants to give their life to the Lord now and repent? After you do, you're going to be cursed. You're going to be used. You're going to be beat. You'll be spied upon. You'll be laughed at. You'll be ridiculed. You'll be accused of being a deceiver, a Judaizer, a cult member. As a follower of Jesus, and as a person that lets his light so shine before men, you can expect people will call you a deceiver. They may say you are from a cult in order to try to discredit you among other people as they did regarding Paul. Even after Jesus and Yeshua had died, he was called a deceiver. As it is written in Matthew 27, 63, that deceiver said Jesus was accused of deceiving the people. He was accused of deceiving the people, as it is written. Others said he deceived the people in John 7 and 12. You'll be accused of going against the traditions. We don't celebrate pagan holidays. We don't. This happened after my baptism. There you go, sis. There you go. There you go. And it will happen. It will happen over and over and over again. If you don't want to follow man's traditions, it will happen over and over again. You'll be accused of wrongdoing. You'll be rebuked. Some will trouble you. They'll accuse you. Who wants to become a believer in Yahweh now? Who wants to give their life to Yeshua Jesus now? Who wants to repent and turn from their wicked ways and obey the commandments now? After knowing all these things that will happen. Doesn't it sound like fun? I'm going to put a song on. We're going to think about all this. And I'll be right back. I'm going to get a little bit of water and I'll be right back.
song, and it's so true. God is in control. He's watching over you. He's watching over me. We got nothing to be afraid of. If we belong to the Lord, it doesn't matter what they can do. I just want to read a few scriptures. I'm going to read a few scriptures on the cross separating us from the world. And then we'll be done. I believe the Lord is done. Just a few scriptures that he gave me. He gave me. John 15, 18 through 21. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Let me pause for a moment. Is somebody hating on you? They're of the world. I didn't say it. The scripture said it. Those that hate you are of the world, not of God. Let's continue. Remember the world remember the word that I said to you if they persecuted me they will also persecute you because they do not know him who sent me John 16 1 through 4 these things oh, excuse me these things have I spoken to you that you should not be made to stumble they will put you out of the synagogue. Yes, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers God's service. And these things they will do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Because these things I have told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. Remember, the Lord is reminding us here. John 17, 14 through 18. I have given them your word. This is Yahweh, Yeshua talking to the Father. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. But that you should keep them from the evil one. Powerful scripture that is. We have to live in this world. But we're not of the world. Galatians 5.11 And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? Then the offense of the cross has ceased. I'm still preaching the law, but I'm still being persecuted. See, somebody will even call you a Judaizer just because you're a Sabbath keeper. Because you want to keep the feast days of the Lord. Because you've decided in your heart that you don't want to do certain things. So now, while they were celebrating with you about the feast of the Lord and the Sabbath day, now they're turning it on you saying that you're a Judaizer. There are people that I know that do that. They walk with you. They were talking like you talk. But the minute they get disciplined, they turn away from everything they said they knew. You can only do that if you haven't really known it. Right, Brother Larry? Right. You don't honor the Sabbath just when it's um, convenient. I'll say it like that. Oh, my Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help us, Lord Jesus. A couple more scriptures and then we're going to pray. Matthew 10. Six, starting with 16 I want the full one this is, this is the icing on the cake I believe this is one of my favorites Matthew 10 let's start with verse 16 
<clears throat> and then we're going to pray. Let me get back over here. If you have any prayer requests, go ahead and put them in the chat room. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, now listen, Take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye unto another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. You will be hated. Look what's happening in Israel right now. Physical Israel. Wars. Rumors of wars. Around the world, wars. Rumors of wars. Spiritual Israel is Jew and Gentile under the blood of Jesus. And look what's happening. Brothers, or so-called brothers, turning against them, each other. You have babies being killed. You have parents killing a how can you how can a parent kill their little six month old baby or it's too much too much mess is going on too much things are going on that we never would have ever seen if there's any prayer requests go ahead and put it in the in the chat room if there's any specific prayers that you might have if you've been persecuted I'm just going to pray a regular group prayer if nobody types anything in there. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just, we thank you that we can share in your sufferings, Father. We thank you, Father God, that you love us so, so much that you allow us to go through certain things as we stand for you. Father, help us, Lord God, to not turn from you. Help us, Lord God, to make a stand for you no matter what, no matter when, no matter how, no matter who might come against us. Father, help us turn the cheek when somebody smacks us on one. If somebody goes to take our coat, let us give them our coat. No matter what someone does to us, Father, help us to forgive. Father, I ask that you would be with blessings, Father. That you would walk blessings through the day. Thinking about you all the time, Father God. That when the hurts come, when the disappointments happen, that you would be with them. That you would let them know they're not alone. Father, I thank you for just visiting. I thank you, Father God, for the love for you, that it grows every day, Father God, that they would get closer and closer to you each day, Lord, learning to forgive and learning to walk with their Father looking towards your coming lord heal all hurts father god just let them have peace from all the hurts that have gone on in their life father we thank you for that lord father i thank you for mavis 
Thank you, Father God, that all that she's sown into her children, Father. She's raised them in you, Lord. She's raising them in you, Lord. And even the shortcomings that we all have, if there be any, Lord, we thank you that that word is in them babies, both young and old. And that your hand is upon them, no matter what decisions they might make and that your hand will draw them home, that your hand will stay them and keep them, Lord, and that you'd encourage Mama, that you would encourage her Father tonight. Father, I thank you for Shaw, the growth, Father God, and Shaw, towards loving you, Yahweh, towards keeping your Sabbath, Father God, towards sharing, Father God, to her friends and neighbors about you and your love and holiness and sanctification walking upright before their God thank you for sure Father I praise you Father Father I thank you for Walter Lord disappointments oh yeah being misunderstood yeah definitely taken advantage of yeah but keep his heart, Father. Keep his heart pure before you, Lord God. Help bring healing to heart, Father God, the, the hurts and the wounds and the disappointments in the heart, Father, that are covered up by jokes. Please heal his heart, Lord God. So much wisdom so much wisdom within him. Bring healing, Father God, to this brother. Thank you, Father. Father, I thank you, Father. Yes. Yes, Father. Mavis asked for prayer for us to be loving as Yeshua towards everyone we come in contact with daily. Job opportunities to come as well as transportation. Praise God. Praise God. And last but not least, Father, we pray for Brother Larry. I thank you for him, Father God. Pressing on, Lord God. Reaching out to whoever he can possibly reach out to to bring the gospel both on the radio and in his own private life to his neighbors to his friends to his family to those that will listen and to those that don't listen to father i thank you for providing for the family lord i thank you that his children will grow up loving you all the time father god i thank you father for being with tamara his beautiful wife in her sickness, Father God, that she would just, if it be your will, bring healing, Father God, that she would protect her, Father God, from being hurt anymore when these things happen, that she would encourage her, Lord God, this beautiful woman of God, and I do mean that. Be beautiful, Sister Tamara. That she'd be an encouragement to her husband to press towards the mark. That the ministry would flourish even more so. Father, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing here tonight to all the listeners that are listening, Father, to drawing them closer to you through the persecution, through the suffering, helping us walk up brightly before you, helping us to wait upon you. We just thank you, Father. We praise you. Hashem Yeshua. We'll see you back here on, um, I don't think anything else is going on till Friday, so we'll see you back here Friday night for the Watchman's Warning with me and Brother Larry. We love you.
wait on Yeshua. Shalom.